now let's get into the updates. So as we go through these, feel free to use the emoji reactions at the bottom of your meet screen to give us a thumbs up if it's an update you like. Um, the first update this month is around Dialogflow and Google Chat. So Dialogflow, if you've never heard of it before, is Google's natural language uh, chat creation system. So create your own chatbots in Google Chat. Now, Charlie, I'm going to hand over to you on this one. You had some nice ideas about how to use this. <laughs> well, I think it's a great way. You could you could use this to create an interface for the frequently asked questions. For those, those things that um, folks are always asking about, where do I find X document or X is, you know, whatever information, those types of calls that take up a lot of administration time, kind of office admin time, you could develop things with that. You could maybe come up with workflows as well, where you're using that natural language processing to make maybe make decisions about which information you provide people with. So I haven't got very far into it, but I think it's something that's you know has huge possibilities in terms of developing you know really helpful time-saving interfaces for for schools in terms of managing that ad you know admin certainly but it's probably got lots of lots more applications more than that yeah i love it i think having a, a student help assistant students can ask questions which normally take up a lot of time um same questions again and again you could have an assistant uh just helping uh out with those kind of responses saving a bit of staff time absolutely uh quite a minor update here um this came out yesterday i believe so there is now dark mode in the Google Drive web interface, and that should be rolling out uh, very shortly. For all the retro DOS and command line people, you can have that duck <laughs> on the screen. Absolutely. Yeah, I still dream of that, please. It's great. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is a really great update. Uh, I'm, I'm so glad to see this after years of needing it. Um, this is when you create Google Sites and you embed documents in your Google Site. Um, what this gives you is now it's going to check the permissions that the content that you share can be said, shared with the uh, website or audience. So this is great because what happens is folks go and share a document in their Google site. Um, they then put it public and everybody's wondering why they can't see the document. It's because the permissions aren't right. So now it's going to check the permissions, which is an absolutely fantastic update. Um, going to make life a lot easier and solve a whole load of problems so yeah good one yeah i completely agree it's going to reduce a huge number of help desk requests uh, and sharing requests from students yeah really uh pleased to see that finally uh, so this update is around google meet hardware devices and just to, some changes to how these are displayed in the admin console and some of the information uh, is no longer available for deeper vision devices out of interest, we had a few people on the uh, on this morning's call who are using Google Meet hardware devices. Is anyone here using a Google Meet hardware device at their institution? If you are, give us a little thumbs up and let us know how you're using it in the chat. It'd be interesting yeah, to hear. I, that, that, I mean, I know we've had mixed feedback. Uh, you know, we don't supply the the hardware devices, but people have given mixed feedback on the. Uh, on, on how well it how well it integrates and and the difficulty of getting them. So most schools are not using the the, the Google Meet hardware devices, but I know a, a couple of people in the community are. Yeah, and I know a lot of, what a lot of people do is they just get a simple Chrome box, and that actually makes a really effective meeting device as well to have there uh, available in a room. So that can be another nice option. So this next update is about that, about security, and it gets part of the ongoing improvements to security, and particularly around admins. So the situation here is that where there are some pretty sensitive actions that can be taken by administrators that have major impacts on your deployment, they are now going to require multi-party approval. So where you've got more than one super admin, uh, you'll now have a position when if you make changes to any of the bullet items there, um, that will need a second admin's approval and this takes you know it, it's to deal with those use cases where you maybe have a bad actor has access to the admin console um and attempts to make uh, that kind of take take one of those sensitive actions to impact on the domain and it's an additional security feature um so i think it's it's welcome to improve security it only affects it affects just those bulleted items because they are pretty sensitive in terms of their potential impact on your deployment 
yeah, likewise, I think this is going to be a really uh, useful feature just for adding an extra layer of protection. Hopefully, you've already secured your admin accounts using two-step verification. Maybe you're already using the Advanced Protection Program as well to secure your accounts. But this just adds another layer of protection, and particularly from that you know, insider threat as well. So yeah, really welcome addition there. Uh, a new update here in the admin console for managing Gemini. And this is around managing access to the alpha kind of features still in the development in Gemini. And there's essentially another admin control here where you can either allow or disallow your Gemini users access to those features that still are in development. So um, yeah, keep a look out for that on the admin console. And out of curiosity, any Gemini users here? Anyone who's uh, purchased Gemini for some users on your domain? Or maybe you're using it personally with your Google One subscription? Cool, quite a few. OK, so this is a new update around the view of users in the admin console. Um, you now have, there'll be, there will now be a, a new tab which is investigate, which pulls together um, all of the various logs that you might use when you wish to investigate a particular user and their activities and their files and so on. And it brings it close to that user view. And what it will do is launch into the, um, uh, into the investigation tool. And um, I think Peter's going to show us it just now. Um, great. Thanks, Peter. Um, it's going to launch into the investigation tool and then allow you to, you'll then be able to, to click on the view logs and it'll launch with all, all the settings required to view that particular information for the, for the user. So it just brings together um, at a user view um, the various logs that you would need just to simplify that admin process a little bit. Yeah, Peter, to add to that? Yeah, um, just to say that it's, already out there now on domains so we're seeing it already available on a lot of domains we manage and yeah like charlie says it's a really nice way of just surfacing some of the information um that you may not be aware you can actually learn about users as well so it's giving you some really useful investigation tool um queries preloaded here so you can quickly launch an investigation. We've got a few more on this page as well. And it just highlights you know, some of the things you can actually use the investigation tool for. So really nice to see that added as well. And we've also got audit logs down here, which are relating to that user as well. And as you launch one of those investigations, as Charlie mentioned, it just fills in all of those conditions for you. So you can do it really quickly without having to look through this long list of fields to find exactly the right one. So really welcome update there. Cool. Also another admin console update. This one is around admin console privileges. You can delegate to other admins. So with the investigation tool when that first launched, it wasn't too granular what you could let other admins do. But now you can actually delegate investigation tool permissions by application. So you could just give another delegate admin maybe only access to see Gmail logs if you didn't want them to see drive items as well. Uh, as well as this, you can also delegate whether you want that admin to just have view access or have full management access, in which case with Gmail as an example, they could retract emails out of the user inbox or drive items they could uh, modify drive permissions. So you've got control over what exactly you can delegate uh, using uh, these roles in the admin console for the investigation tool. So this is an update to chat, um, a very welcomed one, just to try and keep that file space properly organized. You'll now know that there's a, a hopefully you'll see that there's now a tab when, you, when you're in chat called uh, replacing files, it's called shared. It has a new interface. It has some bit better sort functionality. And it will now keep all of the objects that are shared in chat uh, organized in a much more manageable way. So you'll see files and links and, and so on. So it's um, just a much better interface, uh, a, a big improvement on kind of what we had previously. And you'll have the ability to do some additional sorting uh, as well. So yeah, a good update there. 
So this update is for BigQuery export, which is available in Education Standard and Plus. So BigQuery export, firstly, just to quickly overview what that does for you. Normally, your workspace logs will only stay around in the admin console for about six months. After that, they disappear. But with BigQuery export, you can save your log data indefinitely by exporting it into BigQuery. And that enables you to do deeper analysis using SQL, if you know that, or using Looker Studio or Connected Sheets. The update here is around drive label metadata being added to BigQuery logs as well. So you've got even more data now uh, where you can query drive items uh, using that metadata. So you remember last year, there's a, a big update to Google Drive, Google Drive homepage in the improved search, the improved search yet again with a further update. This should be live for everyone now. It started on the uh, scheduled release at the beginning of this week. Um, what it will allow you to do is uh, give you better uh, expanded an expanded search bar with uh, improved search chip capabilities to allow you to filter across files in Drive. Um, and it's as I say, it's it's rolled out, and you've got you know much much better functionality in terms of being able to search within your Drive and find specific files using those chips. So uh, another good improvement. Uh, this is an improvement to filtering for merged cells, merged cells in Google Sheets. So if you've merged cells vertically or horizontally, you can now actually filter those as well based on conditions, <coughs> values, and color. And that's rolling out now to all editions of Google Workspace. So I don't know how much to say about this particular update. I don't, I don't know how many folks are using client-side encryption. Uh, but if you are using client-side encryption, you now have the facility that when you if you want to migrate, when you're migrating encrypted emails from other services to Gmail, you can you can now do that. Um, so it basically means you can you can bulk import mail um, as uh, um, SMI messages uh, without compromising security. So it's it's available now and. Uh, if that's something that you need to do to, in terms of migration, uh, then that's going to be available for you to use. So a while ago, it's announced that appointment slots uh, is going to be retired in Google Workspace in favour of using the much newer and up-to-date appointment schedules. Uh, so this is happening from uh, now to July 18th. And be worthwhile identifying any users still using appointment slots on your domain and encouraging them and providing some support to moving over to appointment schedules, which I think are a lot more intuitive. You've got much more control, much more options, and it's got a much better, much nicer URI, which is in line with other Google Workspace products. And I think that's our last update this month, because I think we covered this one last month. So that's our last update. There are actually a few more updates this month because we've just had Google Cloud Next. Uh, unfortunately, um, Charlie or I or Dan haven't uh, been to Cloud Next this year. Maybe next year. Yeah, I think I think one of us should go next year, Peter. Um, <laughs> I think you might you might be the lucky one to get who gets to go. I, I went to it when it was in San Francisco a couple of years ago. Back back in the days when Google would actually give you a free ticket. Now you have to buy one even as a partner, so it's not as exciting. Uh, but saying that, there are some exciting updates from Cloud Next this year. Uh, the first one of those is the first new Workspace app, which has been launched uh, in a number of years. I think the last one must have been Google Keep. So there's not been any changes to those core apps in Google Workspace for quite a while. The new app here is called Google Vids, which is a new video creation and presentation platform. Essentially, the idea behind it is you can give it access to uh, some resources like a slide deck, uh, give it a prompt, and it will use AI to create a storyboard for your video for you. And it automatically pulls in stock footage like videos, images, uh, background music to support your presentation, support your video. And it fully integrates alongside other Workspace products as well, so docs, sheets, and slides. And we can look forward to trying this out once it's uh, available to uh, try in Workspace Labs in June. 
So uh, unfortunately, we've not had any hands on with it yet, so we're not quite sure you know, what it's like to use, but we'll all have some access, hopefully, uh, in June to explore Google Vids. Uh, a couple of updates here to Google Sheets and Docs. So firstly, with Sheets, uh, Sheets is getting some new building blocks available for creating things like project management plans, um, tracker sheets, managing events. So there's lots of new template building blocks becoming available for Sheets. On Docs, Docs is getting a new tabs interface for bringing um, different bits of information all under one umbrella in Google Docs. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what that looks like. Uh, that's coming out in the coming weeks. And another minor update to Docs is you can now have full bleed cover images for much more visually appealing documents, as is shown in our little GIF, a uh, little image there. Gmail is getting some updates on mobile with uh, voice prompts for the Help Me Write feature on Gmail Mobile. So essentially, you can use your voice to prompt and write an email much more easily using some AI assistance there. Uh, and Gemini in Gmail is also getting an update where it can transform your notes into uh, an email with a single click. Gemini is also going to be coming to Google Chat in the future. So this would enable you to use Gemini to summarize a chat space, answer questions about that space, uh, and various other things as well. And also on Google Chat, chat is being increased to 500,000 members in a space. So um, you know, our assurance community has gotten quite big. Not quite that there yet, but it's good to know we've got a bit of headroom. So we can accept many more people into our chat space in the future. Uh, one last update here. So Google also using AI to help fight and they help uh, improve our fight against spam. So Google have been looking at how to improve that and say that they can block an additional 20% more spam and evaluate a thousand more times user, a thousand more user reported uh, spam every day. So we should see even better improvements in uh, that fight against spam. I would think Gmail is probably one of the better platforms out there at filtering spam. So. Uh, really good to see Google enhancing what we're doing there too.